from Mr. Palmer here, uh, entity relationship diagrams. So this is uh, the final video in the series on databases following the one on normalization. So um, big questions for this are what does an ERD actually show and why are associative entities useful? So why do we bother using diagrams? A picture paints a thousand words. So when you are doing um, any forms of systems analysis, you'll come across several different diagrams. For example, data flow diagrams uh, show how data flows around the system. You have various different forms of process diagram that show the processes within that are um, taking place within the system. So how tasks are actually carried out. And then uh, you have entity relationship diagrams, which is the purpose of the system. And then there are entire languages just dedicated to modeling different uh, systems from different views. So you can understand fully what's going on within a system. For example, UML. So um, ERDs basically, they show the structure and the relationships of data within a system, right? So it helps you to identify your entities. So they are the different things that you're storing data about, the attributes that belong to those entities, so how you're modeling the entities, and helps you identify where your primary and foreign keys are. So there are different relationship types that we demonstrate on, a relation, uh, on an ERD. So we use crow's feet, okay? So you have a one-to-one -one relationship. So for example, I might have a country entity and a capital city entities okay and there is a one-to-one -one relationship between countries and capital cities um, there is a one-to-many relationship between owners and vehicles because one owner may have many vehicles so you can see um, the difference between one-to-one -one and a one-to-many the crow's foot on the vehicle side actually indicates that there are many vehicles uh, then you can have many-to-many -many relationships for example many teachers have many students in a high school there's a bit of a problem with the last one because it cannot exist in a database. And we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail in this video. Okay, so if we actually look at the examples, you can see how they are. So say I've got a geographical database. Okay, um, so I'm storing different cities in a cities table. So my primary key is just going to be city because I'm assuming no two cities have the same name. Okay, I then have a country table. So uh, the primary key is the country name and then I have a city field. So the city field is linked, is a foreign key in the country table, is a primary key in the city table, is a one-to-one -one relationship, because any country can only have one city as the capital city, okay? So there will be no other country in that table that has the same city, uh, same capital in the city table, in the city field, sorry, all right? That's a one-to-one -one relationship. One-to-one -one relationships tend to be quite rare, all right? Um, you may sometimes see a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship on a table, which sometimes doesn't make sense. For example, you may have the name, um, they like the, the say like a customer ID, customer first name, second name, one or two fields, and then you would have a split into a different table where the you have like their height, their weight, their date of birth, whatever it is, okay? And that data is not used on a regular basis. So what they do, is, what you can do is you can split the table put it in, in, a, in a separate table and have a one-to-one -one relationship between the two tables and it's literally just there to increase the speed of the system because um, that data should actually be in, for example, the customer table, all right? Um, now, if you've got one-to-many relationship, for example, like I talked about the vehicles, so here are all the vehicles, primary key is the registration of the vehicle and there are uh, the owner ID is the owner and then that would be the owner table. So you can see that for example, Peter Parker A158 owns the top vehicle in the table and the second one from the bottom, penultimate one. Okay, um, so the one owner can have many vehicles. You can see that the owner ID is the primary key and the foreign key is in the vehicle table. That's generally, that is what you see. Okay, the primary key is in the original entity and the foreign key is, in, is on the many side. Okay, so the primary key is on the one side because that's the unique side, there's only one of them and on the many side is where you have the foreign key. Now, the many-to-many -many relationship, okay, because we said many students have many teachers. So for example, um, you've got the students table. So here are all the students in uh, my student table. Obviously, student ID is the primary key. This is my teacher's table. So there's my teacher ID. There I am, Mr. Palmer, first row, and I've got those five students. Now, it's a bit difficult here for me to query that data, okay? We could have done the opposite. We could have put the teachers field in the, in the students table. But then which teacher do you put in to what student? Because, for example, uh, Peter Parker would have to have KC54. He would have to have F506, T105 because he's got three teachers. So it's the same problem on the other side. You can't query the data. Okay, it's, diff it's difficult to make logical links between them. 
that's the problem many to many relationships can't logically exist in a database okay so how do you fix that <clears throat> basically what we need to do is we've got to break the many to many relationship apart okay so that we don't have many to many anymore we want to put something in the middle now really and truly um, if I want to think about um, the the relationship between teachers and students actually there's something else in the middle one teacher has many classes and many classes have many students all right one class has lots of students in it but one student also has lots of classes so it's a many-to-many -many relationship. So really and truly, the relationship that I want to break down is that many-to-many -many relationship there between class and student. Actually, what I can do is I put a, a, an associative entity in the middle. Okay, so the associative, associative entity is the register. So one class can have many registers because I have a register today, a register tomorrow, I have a register last Friday, and I might have one this Friday. Okay. One, so one class has many registers, each register contains many students, right? So you are breaking down the many-to-many -many by putting something in the middle, so you end up with a one-to-many, many-to-one uh, relationship, okay? That's an associative entity. So the associative entity basically breaks up a many-to-many -many relationship, okay? And it allows you to create, a sens create sensible tables in your database with a minimum amount of data redundancy. Now, all this time we've been talking about, yeah, we need normalization, we've got to remove the um, redundant data, okay? But you need a certain amount of redundancy. Can you, the redundancy comes in the foreign key because you need the foreign key to link the two entities together, okay? So you are repeating that data in order to create that link. So the big question is basically what did the ERD show? So they show the structure and uh, um, relationships between the data. I like to show you entities, parent keys, and from keys, and you should see why associative entities are useful because they split up um, many to many relationships.